and welcome to Game Breakers. My name is Thomas. I am here with everybody. Say your names. Simon. David. Almost got the Skype lag to fix all of that. That would be Allison, Diamond, and David split playing Stan Smith, uh, Strana Harja, and Click Clack the Gnome, respectively. We are, uh, man, towards episode 30 of A Bard's Tale. And uh, when last we left our intrepid heroes, you had just finished slaying Eskryon Keybinder, Renegade Wizard. Uh, you had appropriated his airship, delivered your... Uh, Black Wizard patron back safely to the library and started doing some downtime, essentially. Uh, Click Clack, I believe, had, had retreated to the Druid Circle to start doing some crafting. Uh, Stan had gone shopping in the marketplace and discovered that he was being followed, had uh, <laughs> recruited a rogue friend of the party to aid and Ascent and uh, questioned one of the folks following him, uncovering Rupert the Black, uh, someone at the Twisted Root Inn that is following, uh, has ordered him to be followed around. Struana has received word uh, on top of all the research she's been doing for uh, the party business, has received word that she is scheduled for a special exam coming up. And let's hop right in on that one. So I got, um, last time at the end of the session, I'd gotten a five and a nine on the disadvantage rolls. And I think that I'm just too flustered to make good study time out of it because stress brain. That makes sense. So there was a little bit of info out of that that you gave me in some off time and it was Alpero Teneric, who is a half elk who, who likes the classics, and somebody who goes as Mur, who is a loud, passionate half orc, or at least his stage name is Mur. Right. So and that was about I'm getting, all you could get from that check. So I'm getting nowhere, so I'm, I'm going to go talk to Harridan. Okay. <laughs> Alright, uh, so he's in there with uh, a small group of students. That, that are all just pestering, pesteringly uh, asking him questions as he's sort of half ignoring them and waiting, waiting for one of them to ask a good one. Uh, when you come in, he's like, "Aha! Excellent! You've rescued me. You out." <laughs> and they all just kind of like oh. just start filing out the door. One of them on the way out starts giving you the stink eye, like. You're not from here. I haven't seen you around school. Why are you getting the special information? Enthusiastic smile the whole time, just following him all the way out. And then as soon as the door closes, what the shit? And as soon as you turn around, it's young Harridan again. He, he, has, he has switched it out. Which oh. causes a little bit of a blink, but not a terrible blink. Just like, still, what the shit? <laughs> oh. The test? Yes. Ah, well, you're welcome, by the way. I, I mean, to make sure they'd, be, they'd all be in the same place at the same time. Speed the process along for you, right? Which is less time to prepare and to sort of figure out exactly what would be best to perform for each master. I'm not even sure who entirely the masters are and why. Well, the why, I'll tell you right away. The sorts of things that you've been working on and this whole business with Boronor means that you're going to need some doors to open that you don't currently have keys for. But a title within the city eases some of those locks. And in order to bestow upon you the title of master within the Delta, 
we've got to get this done fast. So there's the why. You know the when. Here's the who. Alpero Tenerik, Joson Moore, Morgan the Tall, uh, Sonny, Chalcedony of Temerel, Jubal Abhedron. Those are the current residing masters. I know who Jubal is. You've met. Um. So all at the same time, I'm performing for all of these masters at the same time, which yes. is going to make it hard to aim for each one. So, gosh. Okay. Well. <sighs> Does anything definitely not go? I would avoid excessive improvisation. You're going to want to include just enough to show off your virtuosity. But given the mix, I would only indulge in improvisation in pieces that are built to accommodate it. Halfling fair, uh, some of the merfolk ballads have, have long improvisational periods. Uh, it gives you some other historical references and cult cultural, ethno-cultural notes and uh, of things that might have that sort of flavor. They're all very well, very well versed historically. If, if you are going to go that route, make very sure you are accurate. Take no liberty with details. Other than that, as long as you perform the way you did the first time I saw you, you'll be fine. And if not, what's the plan B? Well, then I guess Boronor wins and we all die. That <laughs> no might pressure. be a little overly dramatic, but I wouldn't <laughs> expect any less from <laughs> Plan for success and then roll with it. Planning plan for, for the film. worst. Just sending energy into the whole cosmic. Would you like some? Uh, so he passes you a pipe when he starts to wax, wax wistful. Sure. It's a good old halfling leaf. Yep. Probably a little bit relaxing. Just a little bit. Yep. Yep. Goes well with the tea. And, and he will, uh, he'll, with perhaps a uh, persuasion or an insight uh, over the course of the rest of the time, he'll be able to give you some amount of information about the test coming up. Uh, with that, we're going to slide the camera over to Stan. Yes. You have just let your friend out of the alleyway. Yes. Uh, the fellow who'd been following me and I paid him off said Rupert the Black had been the one who hired him at the Twisted Root Tavern, so I was going to head there. Uh, and Sugarloaf, uh, you're welcome to come with me if you want. See where this leads. Oh, I planned on it. I mean, I haven't gotten paid yet. Yeah, I'm what sure were you wanting to get paid anyway? This. I hadn't talked about it, but if you're just tossing tossing gold by the fives and tens out to the riffraff, I, I'm sure you'll take care of me. <laughs> uh, so he'll go to the Twisted Root uh, Tavern. Okay. In the market. Uh, 
it is the least noticeable storefront on the block. Uh, the the sign is just like uh, it, the the sort of burn etching in wood. I can't remember what that's called. Um, simple lettering, no images. Uh, you walk through the door. There's no music. Uh, it's just uh, about a dozen people scattered at tables, looking busier than it seen, than most bars. Where where you look at it, they're either you know shuffling through some papers or or talking, to, speaking to each other. I mean, it's all small talk and gossip, but they seem to be to be really into it. I'll go to the bar and order a beer. ale they have uh, sorry friend we're out of that what do you have oh uh we're out of pretty much everything yeah we, uh, don't get a livery in until like, usually early morning tomorrow it's been a big week You see Trap Springer narrow his eyes. He says, yeah, what with all the cold weather last week, imagine you had a run on it. The bartender looks at him. Yeah, well, when uh, candle wax shortage means we couldn't seal all the barrels, so we got short stocked. And they both kind of nod at each other. Barkeep looks back looks back at you. You didn't come here for booze. What are you looking for, friend? Rupert the Black. <clears throat> Why is that? He's looking for me. I guess. Huh. That's fair enough. Well, uh, Your little friend here vouches for you, so I suppose you're here for the second business. He, he opens up the little, like, half gateway. He goes to goes behind the bar. Come on I in. I hope there's booze back here. I'll, uh, I'll bring you a cold one. He shoves two casks aside, uh, and there's a doorway that goes behind there. Uh, it turns a corner, and there is in, in uh, massive, ornate, hanging sign, uh, the, one moment, the Intercity, uh, let, me, let, me, let me pull it up, so many words, so many words. Agency of Obfuscation. The... The redundancy department of redundancy. Uh, the Intercity Associated Assurance Indemnification Provision and Trust. Limited. Or jackpot of. Right. Uh, as a local and as somebody that has occasionally been on one side of law enforcement, you know that insurance agency is Thieves Guild. Uh, that yeah. is that is the front that the thieves under which the thieves guilds operate. It's how they stay legitimate legitimate enough to keep going. Uh, you head you head out onto the side and you see uh, two folks talking very intently about uh, the orange futures market. Uh, and and they uh, they look up as you come in. Um, I, I will, I will look, uh, I will look back at them and, okay. um, I, I'm looking for Rupert Black. He stands up, or uh, the half-orc stands up. Oh, well, you found him. Who's looking? I'm Stan Smith, and I want to know why you're having me follow. Stan Smith. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You've got, uh, my turn around for me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> ah, yep, 
yep, you're, you're the guy. Well, we've got an insurance policy on you. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't take an insurance policy out on myself. I, there should, I don't know why. How long has there been a policy? Come sit down. I'll take a look at your paperwork. He sits down and pulls, pulls a box of papers out from under the table. Ah, here we are. Eight days. Hmm. Who, who has the policy if it's not me? Well, that's, uh, <laughs> that's why I've been having you followed. You see, policy was taken out by his lordship, the Grand Baron, Andrigan Gore. Hmm. Sure, you recognize the name. The um, head of the market. The very same. Hmm. Do you, do you not trust him? Is that, is that why you're having me follow? I would never say that out loud in the market. <laughs> but I will say that after you've worked in insurance as long as I have, you, uh, you tend to spot the patterns that uh, <coughs> certain people use when they consistently defraud an insurance agency. Hmm. Noted. Is there any way I can get you to stop having me followed all the time? Stay out of the market. I mean, it's yeah, not a threat. It's, uh, it's, it's mostly in the market. You're going to follow me? That's where I am the most worried that it's an issue. Look at, look at it from my point of view. Eight days ago, Andrew and Gordon takes out an insurance policy against uh, life, dismemberment, injury, liability, loss of uh, loss. Or let's see, defamation, uh, loss of property, uh, loss of stat. Pretty much everything, everything that you can insure, everything we offer, you're insured against, and then you show up. Here, in Gorn's backyard. So, either he's an honest, he's, he's being honest, and really wants you to survive, or or he will suffer real loss, or he's not, and we've got a real problem. The fact that you don't have never uh, met him, from what it sounds like, no. Makes me a little more suspicious. Hmm. Well, I'll keep that in mind. Um, I do have some more shopping to do in the district, but I'm nearly done. Not planning to spend a whole lot more time in the market district anyway. Sounds like there's a potentially danger afoot. Well, you know, if there's anything specific you're looking for, I... I do ensure a wide array of excellent merchants, and we also have uh, a repossession department on, you know, very, very good deals on high-quality equipment. The repossession department, the one with baseball bats? What's baseball? Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> Work ball? I don't know. Um, all right, well... I guess I just have stalkers and insurance agents. Stalkers and yep. Uh, thank you for your time. I guess I will go about my business. I don't know what else to do here. They have all their paperwork lined up. I am and I am lawful good. So. <laughs> <laughs> Everything seems legit here. Stock away. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. 
so you you exit trap springer uh you know throws a tip tip down i mean the uh the barkeep was just coming back with your ale he's like oh uh sorry i thought it was gonna be longer than that oh i will i will drink it all and then leave <laughs> you just like before <laughs> you're past the bar just doosh, doosh, bam yeah <laughs> yeah, I have a drink. Uh, Stan has a, a drinking problem, kind of. So yes, and I, ha I will. I was gonna write a list of items I want. I don't know what their costs are. Okay. Um, uh, do you want me to do that and type them to you? Yeah, yeah. If you could do that, uh, we'll we'll go over it on the break that we're gonna have uh, before too long here. Um, so as, as Trap Springer's following you out the bar, like watching you slam the, the, the mug on the table, uh, the camera pans out and zips across the city into the Druid Circle to, uh, the craft workshop within the Druid Grove. Uh, Click Clack, you had some, some specific things that, that you wanted to try out? I had a few more trick arrows in mind, but... I don't think there'll be any kind of difficulty. We've talked about those already. Yeah, those are pretty um, simple. Click Clack had two new invention ideas. Um, he he figured out he's figured out how to make pressurized air canisters. That's how I had the uh, the breathing apparatus last session. Mm -hmm. Building on that idea, he has made what is basically a airbrush gun, like for paint. But the chemical he wants to airbrush is something he's trying to come up with that would basically leave a spray out a coating over Lovelace to protect her from drying out. Because he heard we're going to the desert and he's afraid of his sea crab getting dried out in the heat. So basically it would work as a reverse wetsuit. It would hold her moisture in. Uh, Thompson's water seal kind of thing. But his background is, you know, engineering and a little bit of, of electromechanics, but nothing chemical. So he's trying to find a, uh, oh, and a, uh, the other chemical is a, um, not for the, for the canister, but just a, something that could be a coating that, is a matte black or that absorbs light and gives a stealth bonus that he could apply to both of them. Okay. But um, he needs to find a chemist to do that because he doesn't know chemistry. Right. I would say that you would be able for the for the camouflage stuff, you would be able to get something that would give you a bonus per environment. Uh, so so what's what's stealthy in the Arctic is not stealthy in the desert. Right. Uh, now, for the waterproofing goop, that's going to be a little more complicated. Um, the the general word you get from around the Druid Grove uh, asking around is there is a chemist that, that has probably got a formula for something like that uh, in the Azure districts of the city, which is here on the ping. Ping. And that is the portion of the city that governs, uh, rules the, the oceans and islands to the south and along the coast uh, of the Delta Confederacy. They are a representative thalassocracy, if you're as geeky into the, into the governmental systems as I am. Probably not. <laughs> I, I am not, but I understood those words. <laughs> Uh, so there's a good there's a good chance that uh, that there's a chemist there. Um, they give you the name of a shop that can probably help you. Um, but it's not important right now. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Anybody have a shop name off the top of your head? I blanked. A shop name? The Minty yeah, Rose. What's a, what's a name for a shop in an under, underwater city? Oh, definitely not the Minty Rose. Algae? Uh, Davy Jones's Locker. Protoplankton. 
Quirky Coral, Coral Collectibles, where we have all, all the Quirky Coral Collectibles you could ever want. It's that. It's Quirky Coral Collectibles. <laughs> <laughs> C-Mart. <laughs> uh, so, but like you're you're given a reference uh, the to a shop that can probably accommodate that sort of thing. Uh, they do with with specialty alchemical items. There's a good chance that somebody in the Azure district has had the same problem that you're having. Right. Okay, I'm guessing a charter a bird. Right, 25 silver. No problem. So every time you guys take the eagles, I like to do like the aerial aerial fantasy architecture porn. Uh, as you're, you're flying above the city. Uh, from the Druid Grove, uh, you'll go over the docks and the marketplace. Um, the, the Over the airship docks specifically, you see just, you know, broad arrays of airships. And now that you own one, you feel a little more kinship, probably. Like, oh, yeah, I got to, yeah, hi, yeah. Uh, coming in over the uh, transport station that is over the illustrious Azure Concourse, uh, which is the road that leads down into the underwater city of the Azure Enclave, uh, you can see below the city, below the water, uh, lights. I mean, you, you can see activity and lights, and and there are uh, creatures and vehicles go uh, diving down beneath the water uh, from from the harbor. Uh, there is traffic from to and from, and I mean it's it's its whole own self-contained city down there, uh, and you're you're able to see some of the activity from that as you come in. Uh, Quick manner of showing your papers at the concourse. Uh, everything's very smooth. The, the road down itself is one of the great spectacles of the city. It's, it's featured in the visitor's guide. Uh, it's, as, as the road dips down and, and goes over the edge of, of where the land ends and begins to head down into the water, uh, the, the road becomes a massive tube. You can see water flowing up, uh, up the thing, sort of being cycled through. And in the center of the tube is a column of water bisecting the two uh, landside roads. Beneath it is a, is a river that goes down the center. And there is traffic inside this waterway. Uh, you see tritons riding dolphins and um, you know, somebody in an apparatus of qual and, and various aquatic beings going about their daily business. Uh, it's a very busy road. What do you do? I'm going to take the land side. Okay. Because um, Lovelace can breathe underwater, but for me, it's, you know, it costs me an air tank that I might need later. Um, and just, yeah, take the land side and go down the walkway. Okay, uh, it's it's definitely the slowest way uh, that you you see the traffic going back and forth on you. But riding it, riding Lovelace, it's pleasant. Um, there, it's well ordered, well maintained traffic. There's there's guards all over the place making sure that traffic stays sane. A um, lot of tourists. There's a whole like stopping lane at the edge. It's basically like people with their faces pressed out against it. Um, and the concourse goes for about a mile. Uh, most of it is looping downward, corkscrewing down, uh, until you, you can see the kind of the landing pad of this massive underwater city. Uh, you're, a you're able to follow the directions you're, you were given and get to... Um, quir quirky, damn, what was it? <laughs> I forgot now. Quirky Corals Collectibles? Yeah, Quirky Coral Collectibles. <laughs> and, uh, you're, you're met inside by, uh, a pair of dwarves with, uh, with a gnome behind the counter. I got help. 
Hi. Uh, is anyone here a scientist? Well, sort of. What sort of science do you need? These are uh, your opening lines at a party. Like, I go to parties. <laughs> <laughs> right? Getting in a fight with YouTube next to YouTube is the closest he's done to the best, most party he's been in. Uh, I, I'm looking for, I'm, I'm hoping to develop an alchemical solution, but that's the one area of science I don't know about. Ooh. Well, friend, you're in luck. I happen to specialize in alchemical solutions. Ha, <laughs> that's a pun. Ah, aha, yes. Humorous. And now he switches to Gnomish, and uh, and the dwarves go back about polishing things. So, what sort of problem are you running into? Um, well, I have an idea, and I pull out the uh, the aerosol gun, and I pull out uh, schematics and and a and the scientific description of the chemical I'm hoping to build or create. Hmm. I see. I see. And then I indicate Lovelace. <laughs> As coverage area, he starts doing some math on the side. I know a formula that can help with this, but there's well, there there's one little problem that that it runs into every time, and that always makes it a little more expensive or troublesome. What what's the problem? Abaleth mucus. I mean, it's also the solution. That's a pun. <laughs> Again, very humorous. What? Hey. Uh, what, what? 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 What's What's the problem with it? Well, it's the key ingredient for the formula. I mean, it, it has very specific qualities that, that that we can, I mean, it's essentially the base for the whole thing. But it comes from aboleths. And harvested raw, it's it's bad. It's really bad. I mean, it may, it, 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 it turns you into a sea creature, if that's what you're looking for, I guess. No. I mean, what I mean is it stops you from being able to breathe air. I mean, you're not going to, like, turn into a fish. You're just okay. not going to be able to go above the water anymore. Oh, okay. Um, do you, do you, are you saying that, that makes, that, that I have to go get some, or just that would be the reason it's expensive and it's going to cost me more? Well... I don't keep it in stock. This is a big specialty item, and it's hard to get. If you don't have any, I'm going to have to hire an adventuring party to go out and deal with an aboleth. What if I have one? <laughs> well, hey, I mean, that that's going to be a significant discount if you come in with your own. Can you tell me where to find an aboleth? Like, they're... they're... Where they dwell. I don't know of any off the top of my head, but they do in this area tend to stick out toward the bayou or underneath the dwarven city. There are underground lakes and rivers, and there have been known to be some aboleth lairs in there. And they're nasty creatures. You better, you know, you know what you're going in for, right? Right. So I can't just do and, this myself. And the good news is, you don't have to kill it. I mean, these guys will secrete this mucus pretty much all the time. I mean, it's just in the water where they live. Uh, you just got to collect it. And it, not get turned it, into a... Is it acidic or anything? Can, like, a shield protect me from it? 
it doesn't really do any damage. It just kind of changes your biology on a fundamental level, which is the, essentially the property that we're looking for in it. Just to be waterproof? To be perfectly waterproof. To be gnomish waterproof. Understood. Water re right. retentive, as I understand it. All right. Um, I'll be back later. Great. You know, there is a group of uh, basically hunters that that operate here. Um, they they go for big game. Uh, any any creatures that are troublesome and not protected by the enclave, uh, you know, they they might know where there's an adolith that's fair game. Because here's the thing, some of them are, are members of the enclave, and so if you, you might have to end up like, I mean, they're sentient. If they, if they follow the rules, they can vote and everything. Oh. All right. Yeah, yeah. You, these are ancient, horrible creatures. They have memories from before there were things to remember. Right? Don't so talk to them for whatever you do. So so this isn't just like a, a beast I have to go collect something from. This is this is a this is someone with like opinions. Yeah. Yeah. But evil. And, uh, invariably, I mean, they're they're awful, awful creatures, which is, you know, just one of the many, many beautiful things about living in, in the Azure Enclave is sometimes you just got to deal with those kind of things. Okay. Now, if all you're looking for is maybe to, to get a, a, a friendly cup of snot, I mean, there's some that live here. Yeah. Is, is, will that be enough? Yeah, he, he, he writes down the, the volume that he's going to need, and it's, you know, for for per dose for the crab, you know, he figures it out to, how long's your trip going to be? Do I have any idea how long the trip is going to be? Even a blind guess. Well, the the day in question is in about a week and a half. Let's say three days. Three days. Got it. That'll cover travel time. Uh, okay. He, he, he tells you the amount. I mean, it's basically like a bucket full. You know That's where I'm like... That's a standard pollution rate. If, he, if, if you get it straight from the source, like, pure, or concentrated, it's going to take a lot less. Do you know where I might find one of these domestic ones? Well, I mean, I don't keep that kind of company, but there is an area of the city that that kind of company sort of keeps to itself there. Uh, also, there is one of the city councilors that's an abolith. A representative from from that district, in point of fact, from the from that uh, from that city area. I don't know how politically you connected are. You got any politicians that owe you a favor? I'm trying to figure out if Click Clack at all kept track of that stuff. <laughs> I don't think he did. I don't think he'd know it if we had any friends. <laughs> He lets the bar deal with all that stuff. Uh, maybe. Um, can you give me directions to that part of town? Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, honestly, you take the Azure Azure on, or the Azure Concourse all the way down. It'll end you at the uh, at the Sapphire Palace. Which is the the administrative the administrative center of the city? That's uh, where all the government types 
go to do their thing. Govern, I guess, argue mostly. All right, Th thank you. Happy to help. I walk outside. We have those earrings, right? Yes. I, I walk outside and I buzz Strana. Hello? Mm -hmm. That's sort of a trip. <laughs> Hi. Hi, it, it's, it's Click Clack. I, I, the, yes, the, hi. The, the gnome ranger. I, yes, I know who you are. We, we've What's been up? adventuring together for a while. Yes, we have. This was not an email. <laughs> What's up? <laughs> it's kind of an email. Kind of an email. Do, do, do we have political connections? Yes. Uh, I'm in the, was it Azure District? Is that what it's called? The Azure? Azure Enclave. I'm in the Azure Enclave and I need to make friends with an evil politician. Do we know anyone that could help? Why do you need to make friends with an evil politician? I need his mucus. <laughs> <laughs> I want to say that's not the weirdest thing I've heard today, but no, no it is. It is. <laughs> um, I I need someone political to help me get him to spit into a bucket. <coughs> Jubal. What? The uh the the secret master. I forget exactly what we called him. I'd have to go scroll back. Sorry. Jubal. You took us into a. Wait, you weren't there for that, were you? I don't. That was just me and Stan. No, uh, he's met Jubal. Okay. He's the guy who gave you a ride to the voice. Oh, yeah. So, do you remember this guy with the carriage that floats? I, I think that he would probably be your best bet. Where? Where, where do I find him? You know, I think he told us how to find him. But I don't remember. Well, um, he's going to be at my recital. <laughs> you would like to come to my recital. <laughs> when when is uh, that? In a, a, about six days at whatever time it's at and where it's at, which is probably the library uh, district. Aren't we leaving right after her thing? After her we have 19 days. Oh, okay. We have a little more time than that. Um, sure. It's a friend thing to do, by the way. I would have anyway. I, I'm just letting you know that that's also a friend thing to do. I'm providing you with additional information because you often seem to need it. Are we friends? We're not enemies and we're not dead. So I'm going to go with mostly yes. I will make a note of that. <laughs> not dead, not enemy, mostly yes. <laughs> like, the, you're trying not to laugh on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> Um, All right. Other than that, I don't have any really good suggestions. All right. Um, he's been taking notes this whole time, just for the record. Okay. Um, good, good, good luck with your recital. I will see you there. Thank you. I will see you soon. And he's smiling at you, even though you can't see him. You can hear people right. smile. Yeah. Right. Is there anything else Click Clack's going to do in the Azure Enclave? It is uh, war uh, and uh, of waterways and airways. I he he makes 
He sketches blueprints of all of the mechanisms and then heads back to his workshop in the in the druid section to work on everything else that he needs besides the mucus. All right. Uh, so we'll do some downtime rolls, and that's going to be a good good point for us to take a quick break. And uh, we will take care of some housekeeping and some gold spending, and maybe we'll, we'll be to dice rolling here in a minute. And uh, so this has been Game Breakers. If you like what we're doing, hit like. If you want to see more, hit subscribe. If you want it to get better, so do we. And we made a Patreon, so you can help. Uh, hop over to our Patreon link and see how you can help us get better. And meanwhile, have a good game.